Speaking of Steve Vesplanski, I want to tell you a little story. This is not second hand. Pete Vesplosky repeatedly stated at his forums that he was open to have appointments and meetings with his constituents. And when he said that, the whole room stood up and said, I tried, I tried, I couldn't get in. And that's when I turned my video camera on and waited for him to say that again so I had a, I had a record of what he said. And I tried and tried and tried to get in to see Pete Vesplosky and finally I told him, I said, listen, I have you on videotape saying that your office door was open and if it's not, I'm going to make an example out of you on YouTube. <laughs> well, guess what? I got a meeting. At the time of this meeting, the underwear bomber had just been apprehended coming into the Detroit airport trying to blow up an airliner with about 289 people on it. He confessed at the time that he was apprehended that he had trained with other Al-Qaeda terrorists in Yemen who were, tra who were training to blow up other planes over other American cities. What did our administration do? They gave him lawyers. They read him his Miranda rights and he clammed up. I related that to Pete Vesplosky and I said, Congressman, your president gave an international terrorist the rights that only belong to an American citizen. And you sided with your president in doing that, knowing that he had trained with other terrorists to come into other flights into this country, some of which may be bound for Chicago, some of which may fly over northwest Indiana. So what did your president decide to do? He decided to let him lawyer up. And I said, Congressman, right across the table from him, I said, Congressman, my family is at risk because of your policy to be vigilant against terrorism. Following that was about 20 seconds of the most uncomfortable silence that I think Pete Vesplosky has experienced in a long time. He thought that was a good time to examine the top of his shoes. And after about 20 seconds of silence, he responded with talking points. And I said, Pete, if an airliner goes down in northwest Indiana and takes out Merrillville High School, and we have a thousand funerals on our hands because of your refusal to treat terrorists like terrorists and to call a snake a snake because of who it might offend, your democratic talking points aren't going to really hold sway with the mothers and fathers attending those funerals. And I say that to present to you not a political opinion, not a partisan point of view, but irrefutable evidence that the allegiance that Pete Vesplosky has to the Democratic Party is greater than his concern for the welfare of his constituents in Northwest Indiana. And if that story doesn't prove it to you, you better check your polls.